and welcome on how to set up your point of sale and Shopify to work together. At first, setting up all of this and getting it working can be a little bit intimidating. But I am going to go over the setup, the upload, and download with you in detail. But right now I just want to give you a quick overview of how it works. As you can see, there are four main parts on your computer that you will be using. The link to Shopify, your email, your hard drive, and Rocket Point of Sale. The one thing you will need to have working is your Shopify. If you can't set it up by yourself, which a lot of people do, you can call your dealer for help or you can call Rocket Point of Sale or email us for help. We will be glad to help you. When you first start, you're going to want to get your inventory from Rocket to Shopify. And I will go over this in detail in a few minutes. But we have a routine built into Rocket Point of Sale now that will create the file that Shopify needs. It will save it down to your hard drive. Now from your hard drive, Shopify will grab the file, pull it up, and create the inventory items in Shopify for resale. Now one of the main things you want to use Shopify along with Rocket Point of Sale is Shopify will send data to your email as a link to a file. You grab that file save it down to your hard drive and then Rocket Point of Sale will pull it in including all the invoices, invoice lines, new customers, and sales history. Now if you accidentally pull the same data in twice, Rocket is smart enough not to double up on it. So now you can run your reports, especially your daily money report on your sales in Shopify. You can also run your Rocket daily money reports by itself or the Shopify daily money reports by itself or both of them combined. Here we are in the nickel folder on your computer. There is two folders you want to make within your nickel folder. So go over to the right right click say new folder now you have the folder up there and I like to call this one art this is where you store your art for the items on Shopify you want one more folder I call this one uploads and downloads. This is where you're going to store your files going up to Shopify and coming down from Shopify. Okay now we're going to bring up the point of sale and set up what we need to set up in it. So we're going to go over to file and you'll see a new line that says shopping cart. This will come up but you do need an unlock from rocket point of sale to have this screen come up. If you do not have the unlock it will not come up. It is keyed to your company only. Trying to modify the unlock or send it to somebody else for use it will not work. Trust me. Now first thing we have in here is clean inventory of commas. There cannot be any commas in your SKU, barcodes, or descriptions. The reason being, everything is sent back and forth between the point of sale and Shopify in what they call a comma delimited file. So any commas in there will screw up the file. So by clicking this, it will go through your inventory and clean up your inventory for you. Let's go over to settings. Now, if your shopping cart says zero in stock, you still want to allow sales of this item. 
and this applies to Shopify if you have this set sell if zero quantity on hand it will sell an item even if it shows a zero quantity or less if you do not want to do this you can uncheck this this is it sets it for every upload now you can still go into Shopify and flag certain items not to sell not to sell if they are zero quantity or less show suggested list price on the shopping cart within Shopify you can show a list price or whatever price you want to put in there so they can see the customer can see oh they're selling it to me at this price but this is what it would cost if I walked into a store and bought it erase import file when finished this helps keep your uh, computer clean of all these extra files coming down because each time you do a download or an upload you're creating a bunch of files and after a while it can get kind of confusing which file is what and but I'll show you how we handle that this here is your shopping cart street it has to match the street you put in Shopify if not nothing works so this is what keys off in Shopify on what files to update and the reason this is in there at all is if you have multiple stores but you're using one database to handle everything now this here is where you find your folder that you just created in nickel uploads and downloads and this here puts an extension on the front of the file name so it knows where to go search for the files and help and place the files each time okay over here is your fulfillment service leave it set to manual unless you're using shipwire web whatever that is Amazon marketplace or custom these I don't even know how they work um, it's part of the shopping cart thing and I have no idea how they mesh into it um, but if you leave it on manual everything works fine now when you close out of here it saves those settings you can see they're all in here and we're using an address of a shopping cart that is already set up one of our clients is kind enough to let us bounce off of their shopping cart for this demo we may have to uh, fuzz out some of the names and stuff for their privacy okay now we want to come in and set up our inventory for importing to the shopping cart we're going to put two items up ashtray and big bertha irons so we want to go in here and you'll notice that there's a new tab on the inventory screen and if this is not checked you want to make sure it is checked because that signals to the system that you want to upload it to the shopping cart this field here you cannot change that is a linking field between the shopping cart and a point of sale we have our quantity on hand we'll say we only have like 38 of them our shopping cart price is five dollars our compare price is eight dollars we have six pounds and we have a cost over here of two dollars which that goes up to shopping cart too that helps calculate how much money you're making so we're going to save it now we're going to come over here and find our big bertha irons and that's checked already for the, to go up on the shopping cart again our linking file that you cannot edit um, let's say we only have 15 of these in stock cost on the shopping cart 600 our compare price is 945 it weighs 32 pounds to the ship there's a little bit of notes we're going to put up there you can put a big long description in here you want up to 200 characters and also we're going to check we do have a vendor cost so we're going to save this this button here groups things by if it's on the shopping cart so when you scroll through all your shopping cart items are together instead of being spread out across you know maybe thousands of items 
Okay, so now we're going to close. We're going to come out here to our shopping cart. And we're going to export. Right here it shows you the name of the file it just created back in your folder that you created a while ago. Export product, the year, the month, the day, and seconds past midnight. This is important because if you recreate another file, the one with the highest number here is the latest, according to the date. Okay, now let's go to Shopify and import the file. This is the, I guess the best word is a management screen where you can see your orders, products, customers, do your analytics, marketing, discounts, whatever in Shopify. Like I said, this film is not to teach you Shopify, but just how to move data back and forth between it and the point of sale. So we'll show you the products that we have in here. We have one item right now. And I do strongly suggest you create your products in the point of sale and move them up to Shopify versus in Shopify creating your products and moving them down to the point of sale. We track a lot more features in the point of sale than Shopify has room for uh, as far as fields. Or not they don't have room, but they just don't have as many fields as we have. So if you create it in the point of sale, move it up here, it works out a lot easier. All right, so now you notice it says all products and inventory. When you bring up new items, you want to do it through the all products. You want to import it. And so we have this little box here. I usually say overwrite whatever we're importing so we'll add the file we will go in to our nickel program uh, where are you nickel there you are and remember we created the up and load down file okay now here's the example what I was talking about the one with the highest number is the latest one so 92 is the highest number. I created three of them to show you this. So this is one we want to import. You just click on it and say open. And it's in there ready to be placed into your um, Shopify. Upload and continue. It gives like a little picture of what it's going to look like for you. It cranks through and bam there's our items we got our ashtray and our big bertha now there is no pictures after playing with this for a while you can import pictures straight from the point of sale but i found it's really hard to do and the easy way to do it is come in here to your ashtray and if you remember i said uh make an art folder on your computer put your pictures in that so now we can go back to nickel art ashtray i found this picture on uh the internet you can actually take pictures of your items with your phone or camera and put it on here whatever you want to do to get the picture say open bam the picture's there come back to our products now people will see that when they come to the point of sale portion of the, uh, or I should say the actual shopping cart. Remember, this is only for management back here. The, the people doing purchasing don't see all this stuff. So now we're going to come in here, do the same with our golf clubs. They're in there. Now if you notice, we have our price at 600 our SKU, our barcode, if we want to track it during track it during uh, um, if allows them to sell if it's below zero in stock we save it and the product saved 
and everything's ready to be sold now. They can go into the point of sale from, you know, the the web and start purchasing stuff. It's that easy. And a uh, good way to make a lot of extra money, believe me on that. Okay, one of the more important things that people want on a, a tie-in between a point of sale and a shopping cart is the quantity on hand. You notice we have on the shopping cart that we have 38 in stock. But, and we do have 38 here. But let's say we sold 10 in our store which would make this 28 now, which would happen automatically when you do the sales, of course, but I'm just doing it to be quick. And so we now we want to update the shopping cart with our new quantity. So you come in here, shopping cart, update quantity on hand. Do you want to update the quantities on the shopping cart? Yes. Again, it created a file, update quantity, shopping cart, year, month, day, and seconds. So we close out of there. The file's sitting over there. The shopping cart's waiting on it. Now the important thing on this, if you import it to products, it won't do anything. It has to be imported to inventory. So we do import, find the file we just created, and right here it is in our nickel uploads and downloads. Once you do this time or two, the system remembers what folders to go to. So we click it, open, upload it, start the import, and you see instantly it says 28. We have 28 items available. And it did say 38 before. Okay, so if you do a sale and the point of sale, you upload the quantity to the shopping cart, it adjusts the numbers of quantity on hand. But what if you sell something on the shopping cart that you haven't sold or maybe you did sell on the point of sale? So you need the data from the shopping cart to come back down to the point of sale to adjust its quantities. So how you do that, we go back into our shopping cart and then we go to orders and it says we have three orders now when you do when a customer does an order on your shopping cart it emails you the order with the quantity they bought the addresses everything else associated with it but we'll say this customer came in three different times over the last couple of days and bought did three invoices okay and so we want this sales information to come back to the point of sale for several reasons. To update our quantity, list any new customer, also to um, for reporting. So what we're going to do in here, again, this is like the, the command center of the shopping cart. We're going to export the sales. Now, you already got an email with these sales, but we want to import export this into this shopping cart or into the point of sale, I mean. So we're gonna say all orders. Now as you go along day by day, you're gonna say orders by date, just do one date. I mean, you could pull in all of them, but just do it by date. And that way you're only doing, yeah, maybe get 50 sales a day. So that way you're only pulling that 50 sales instead of thousands of them. So we're gonna export the orders. And they, and they are exported. Now, my email just went off saying I got a file. Now, here's my email that just came in from the shopping cart. And here's the link of the file it just sent me. It's a CSV file, which can be open in uh, Excel if you need to, but you don't have to. You click on that. It opens another window that you really can't see too good here, but it puts down in the lower part of that window the name of the file, and then you're going to open the file. Once you click this, 
After you've clicked the file name, it will open up Excel on your computer screen. I kind of wish they didn't do that, but that's the way they do it. And for those not real familiar with Excel, it's a spreadsheet, and it looks pretty jumbled up here. One of the things you can do is click right here if you want to look at it. Double click on one of the little lines, and it opens up all the fields. Now you can see that there is quite a lot of data that is kept in here. And these sales were done back on May 3rd, so we're using the old data. And um, like I said, there's a lot of data in here. <laughs> it took a long time to get this to work, believe me. <laughs> but it all works great now. And so what you want to do, once you have this open, it has to be put somewhere where the point of sale can grab it. So you come in here and do File, Save As, Browse, come in here to your nickel folder again, there you go, uploads and downloads, it's already got a name, save it, and you're done, you can close the window now. Okay, now you save the file to your hard drive and we have to pull it into the point of sale. Very easy to do. Come over to shopping cart, import. We use import sales from shopping cart. This will pull in any new customers that have a sale. This here will pull in all customers so use this sparingly. Um, a lot of times people will sign up and then they'll buy nothing. You don't want them dragged into your point of sale if they haven't bought anything. This only pulls into people who have bought some. So do you want to update your sales history with sales from the shopping cart? Yes. Do you want the shopping cart sales to sub subtract from your quantity on hand? Yes. So we go in and get the file we just saved. And it's done. Now if we come in here and look, we have a new customer, Tracy Smith from Thermont, Maryland. It shows her address, her phone number, how much money has she spent with us, her invoice lines, and uh, anything else concerning her. Now, let me show you how the reports work real quick. We did one sale today. Put a zero in here because those are old, older, uh, I should say older um, sales we did on the shopping cart. So I have to put the date to include those. But we're doing the POS only, so we print it. And you see we have one invoice. Guy did $249. So now we're going to go in same report. Shopping cart only. Put in a date range that it'll find. Three reports, $11.75. Now we can go into the same report. Daily money for system. Make sure we put in the right date range and do all of them. Now we have four invoices, so this shows everything we did in sales today in the point of sale and the shopping cart. Very slick feature. Now, when you first see this, you think, wow, I gotta create files, save files, pull in files. This is true. After doing it, eh, three or four days, I would say, you get to be an old pro at it and you can do it real quick. When I first wrote this and start doing it, I would go, oh, I do this, do this. And now I can just do it blindfolded, actually. And uh, it erases the files that you save down automatically so you don't get a big jumble of files. And it does take a little work. But the benefit of having an online shopping cart you make a lot of money. You'll probably make more money on it than you do in your store, to be honest. 
and um, a couple suggestions I have don't put your whole inventory up there if you're selling a pack of gum nobody's gonna buy it off of a shopping cart yep. and, and there's reports in the point of sale to figure out which items you sell the most of and um, put those items up start out small and expand we had one customer that he had a little sunglasses shop now he has these giant websites with um, sunglasses binoculars telescopes everything he was making so much money and I help him set up his shopping cart and the point of sale to do it he's making so much money now he bought a new house he bought a damn Rolls Royce the guy's swimming in money and he just started out with a little store in a mall so the potentials there go for it and good luck questions email us and have fun that's all